Sangal Sapa Group. We are very fortunate today. Uh, today's class is given by His Grace Fran Govinda Prabhuji. Uh, Prabhuji, we are reading Saitanya Charitra Amrita, uh, Chapter 24 from 136 verse. Please take over, Prabhuji. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Thank you, Hare Krishna. <coughs> Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Daita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Brinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Daita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Brinda So we are serving Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhulila Chapter 24 beginning with text 136 I think yes yeah. um, the chapter is entitled as explanations of the Atma Rama verse One thirty six Krishna Bahir Mukha Dose Maya Hoite Bhai Krishna Un Mukha Bhakti Hoite Maya Mukta Hai Krishna Bahir Mukha Dose Maya Hoite Bhai Krishna Un Mukha Bhakti Hoite Maya Mukta Hai Synonyms by his, his Divine Grace AC Bhakti Vedanta Sahin Prabhupada. Krishna Bahi Mukha of going against Krishna consciousness. Dose by the fault, Maya Hoite, from the illusory energy, Bhai, fear, Krishna Unmuk, in favor of Krishna consciousness, Bhakti, devotional service, Hoite from Maya Mukta, liberated from Maya, Haya, one becomes. Translation. By opposing Krishna consciousness, one again becomes conditioned and fearful due to the influence of Maya. By executing devotional service faithfully, one is liberated from Maya. <clears throat> I'll read a few more sloka, but on this translation, Srila Prabhupada put it so nicely. Let me invoke the mercy of Srila Prabhupada first. Om Ajnana Timirandhasa Genanjana Salakaya Chakshurum Militam Jena Tasmai Sri Guru Venama Sri Chaitanya Mano Vistam Stapitam Jena Bhutale Kayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Shapadantikam Bandeham Sri Guru Sri Jutapada Kamalam Sri Guru Nubaishnavamscha Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathanitam Tam Sajeevam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakha Nitaanscha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Samini Tinamini Namaste Sarasati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Sunnabadi Paschat Deshatarine Bancha kalpa taru vescha, kripa sindhu bhoye vacha, patita nam pavane bho, vaishnave bho namo namo. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Adhita Gadadhar Sivasadi Gaur Bhakta Binda, Hare Krishna Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama Hare Rama. 
राम राम हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो इन दिस वर्ष श्री चैतन्य महाप्रु एक्सप्लेनिंग दिस टू सनातन गोस्वामी कृष्ण बहिर्मुख दोषे माया होते भय By opposing Krishna consciousness, one again becomes conditioned and fearful due to the influence of Maya. What does that relate to us? From Prabhupada's day-to-day lecture, if we hear, the hear Prabhupada write bhaya. Bhaya means fear. Do conditioned soul see the fear? Do the devotees see the fear? it seems like everybody is normal walking doing things so there is a three fear three types of fear and this is a sequence next verse going to explain the origin of fear this morning when i was reading this uh that the sequence of three stages of fear first fear is that everything non krishna conscious non devotional is creating a result that we are going to face in future and it eventually brings us down from human consciousness according to level of consciousness there are five gradation covered consciousness aborito chetana then sankuchito chetana contracting consciousness then there is a mukulito budding consciousness shila bhakti vino tagore explains and then there is a mukulito then vikasito then purna vikasito so five level of consciousness we are conscious being we are not made of dead matter we are conscious being we are um we have a uh, awareness we have a thinking power obviously we have a feeling there is not something you wish to away it is natural natural we are made of that but there is a gradation in conditional life there is a gradation of evolution of consciousness not to be mistaken of darwin's we are not interested of that darwin philosophy is mutation selection nothing about consciousness evolution shila prabhupad profoundly very prolifically beautiful explained this conscious evolution that covering consciousness means the trees rocks there is soul also but they have no understanding they have no fear they don't know what fear is the trees or you know some chopper tree chopper is coming or some guy come and break the rock they have they they are not aware even they are so uh, badly wounded above them is the animal animal yes they do have a fear i remember even here in america when you have a stick you, you some dog is there you go with the stick and they have a same fear so they have a feeling little higher than the trees and rock but not as high as human so there is a some evolution taking place and better than them is hu- human being but there is a five types of human being by the evolution of consciousness some are immoral atheist some are some are immoral theist and some are moral theist so this is also sequence one is better than other and then who are aware of god above them and the highest is 
who are um, ready to accept uh, servitorship. Those who join, they are called bikoshita. They are chanting, they are hearing, they, are, they have interest what God has to say, what is my duty, who am I, where am I. And those who merged into or drown into the ecstatic stage of loving service to please Lord all the time, they are called Purna Bikoshita, pure devotee. So this is a five level uh, gradation of consciousness. So come to this point of three fear, three types of fear. First fear causes us pain. All the pains in this world has a two division. It causes some people are suffering with it. If some pain uh, causes me suffering, that also has a two division. It can change me from non-devotee to devotee. If the pain is like hurting me, humiliation or losing job, whatever, the pain is there. Uh, lost a uh, child or, or there's an earthquake or something, something causing us pain. If that pain causes or push us to become a devotee, then that pain is actually not pain anymore. It is a, uh, actually a part of sadhana bhakti. Uh, that's why our Acharya writes this. Tumaro sevai, tumaro sevai, dukha hai jato seo to paramasu. So in your service, even when some uh, apparently suffering comes or ap apparently some misery appears, pain I experience, it is actually paramananda suk. Actually, ultimately, it is the greatest pleasure. Why? Because it's purifying me. Heating and hammering. Purification in this case is heating and hammering. When you uh, purify a gold, you put in the fire. So you um, feel the heat and then you pull it out and then you hammer it. Why? So that it will turn into a beautiful piece of jewelry to put on, on your body, decorate. So similarly, in order for us to be accepted by Krishna as a most lovable uh, servant, heating and hammering is required. So if the pain is bringing us close to Krishna, then it is part of, it's accepted. If that pain will take somebody away from Krishna, like some abuse uh, sometime amongst uh, some people, uh, if that uh, becomes a bad memory that that person don't want to be part of Krishna consciousness or go away, then it is a harmful thing done, very bad thing done. Uh, and then uh, there should be responsibility, responsible to suffer for that. So this is one kind of fear, the fear of pain. Higher than that, fear of death. What is that death? Fear of death? Losing consciousness. Like a deep sleep. Deep sleep, when you come out, you claim, okay, I, I had a good sleep. But during the sleep, you had no idea. Okay, your body needed some exertion, you know, hard work or something. Then you go to rest and you come out. You feel better. But actually, if you never woke up, if you really knew in your house that everybody went to sleep and never woke up, they're all dead, ask yourself, would you go to sleep? Probably not. <laughs> Try to stay awake. So fear of death is there. Fear of death is there. This professor challenged me one time. He said, I don't have a fear of death. I said, excuse me, you just told me last month that you, you don't like this chemotherapy. Why did you go to chemotherapy? Well, the sickness. I say, well, well, if you don't have a fear of death, the death will, the, the cancer will take you earlier death instead of curing. Why are you are afraid? 
what is <laughs> anyway we had a here the challenge like why are you asking me this i said because you have a fear of death you are not aware of it that's why you take medicine that's why you want chemotherapy so you don't want to die early you want to live as long possible the last bite of sense enjoyment so fear of death is greater than fear of pain because after that existence we don't know where we are entering so for a karmi it's a very heavy so first two things actually mostly for the karmi the outsider the fear of pain fear of death but there is a higher than that is for the devotees fear of surrender this is actually whole chapter is all about that uh, fear of surrender why in personalist idea or merging idea is all is a fear of surrender they do have a fear of surrender this is in bhagavad gita chapter 4 text 10 propad explained that we are born with three attachment and general average public will not understand this this is for the devotee Uh, i want to serve lord with my husband wife children with my all the good facility that i can get with everything with everyone i'll serve no 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 you have to surrender first completely surrender nothing is your is all krishna's well it's easy to say but practically to apply it and <laughs> do it not everybody can make that commitment uh, that doesn't mean they're less we just have to help them to come that point that's why there is a hari katha right now that's what we do uh, what, what is the purpose of this budayanta prasparam the beginning first installment of budayanta prasparam that we help each other to make this process surrender process of surrender easier easier and without surrender there is not real happiness of krishna consciousness i tell you right now the reason is because you cannot be compassionate even with others completely you can exhibit little bit but compassion compassion definition is nirapeksham munim santam vimatsara samadarshanam anubrajami aham mittam puje tangri renubi krishna says i will purify by those devotees food das and krishna is backing those devotees who are those devotees nirapeksham they do not have any sense enjoyment desire because they don't have any en- enjoyment spirit in the material realm because they are enjoying in spiritual realm they are drawing happiness in krishna's relationship in their heart and when they don't have any intention to exploit no sense enjoyment idea i mean uh, desire then compassion naturally comes what does that mean they can see the suffering of the conditioned soul those who have a sense enjoyment idea proportion whatever level and karmi they cannot be compassionate not possible of course you can say partially okay partially possible <laughs> those who are like trying to be compassionate here they are like a one big personality i won't say the name cuz my i'm trying to protect myself not to commit unnecessary he propagate mercy is everything mercy is everything mercy is everything and uh, so somebody sent me a, a little youtube uh, interview so they ask you eating beef you are a big uh, preacher of non violence and mercy 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 compassion compassion well, what is this Say, no no i don't kill i just eat whatever whoever gives so he is not even aware that he has a responsibility not to support those violence 
So mercy and compassion is not defined in this world properly. Only Vaishnavas has the idea. Because Vaishnavas generally, they don't have a sense enjoyment spirit. So they can hear and see the need of the conditioned soul suffering. They can really help. That was 100% fully manifested in Prabhupada. That's why Prabhupada could actually feel the pain. We hear sometimes some, you know, very heavy um, revelation in Prabhupada's life that in the middle of the night he called Guru Kripa Maharaj. That uh, you are a sannasi, why are you sleeping? He said, Prabhupada, it's middle of the night. He said, I am also sannasi. I am awake. I'm translating these books. Why not you chant for the welfare of the whole world? The Prabhupada, I'm tired and it's middle of the night. I didn't know that. He said, sannasi means you should be not feeling comfortable seeing the others suffering. And Prabhupada had tears. He's translating, but he's seeing the conditioned soul so much suffering. That's why he continuously going on and on and on. In 10 years, to publish that many books, to give a devotional explanation, it's impossible. It's only divine personality like him can do. Never found in history like this, worldwide mission like this. And so... That is the point, that because Prabhupada has no material designation, he can pay attention and see and hear the conditioned souls suffering. He can see and he can hear them, even though they cannot see. So, <clears throat> of course, Guru, Guru Kripa Maharaj, <laughs> he was very kind. I, I can't believe they are so surrendered. And it says, I'm sorry, Prabhupada. I'm conditioned soul. I'm not a pure devotee like you. So why aren't you? Why can't you become pure devotee? It's very simple. Do what I'm doing. Engage all your senses. <laughs> very simple way. But of course, we carry bags from so many lives. Uh, it doesn't allow so quickly. But Prabhupada was so much encouraging and always encouraging. And then Guru Guru Maharaj surrendered. He said, okay, I'll do whatever you want me to do. After a few minutes, Prabhupada looked at him. He said, I'm ready to do what you want me to do. So go, go back to sleep. You need to rest. <laughs> because you're not completely, otherwise you'll tire. Today. So it was very nice. But the point Prabhupada made that when you are committed in the mission carry, to carry on, you, in our emotional <clears throat> feeling will be affected to the others. The more we are attached to Krishna, more we are attached to devotional service, more we are attached to chanting holy name. Like this morning, I asked this devotee in the temple, they were anyway saying that oh you are chanting nicely I said wow how do you chant he said why well, chant alone I said really chanting alone I never knew that I never chant alone I, said, I see you chanting alone I said no I never chant alone you should never think like this where is scripture says this is the holy name is a person or, or a, a dead word You have to be, because our connection with Krishna is not only constitutional, it is also cognitional. We have to be aware that Krishna is a person. This is the first thing of Japa. First thing, you pay obeisances. Just like you go to temple, you pay obeisances to the deity. You pay obeisances to the person. The Krishna name, Hare Krishna, Rama, Prabhupada says, like the three personalities. You pay obeisances. You see that you are calling them, you are calling, you are praying, please, my Lord, engage me, please, accept me, I know many, many lifetime I could not serve, please accept me, like this. This is fear of surrender, 
This is what Prabhupada translated. Surrender, there is a genuine fear. Hello? Hello? I think yes. continue. Okay. So then, next verse we go. Bhayam ditiya vinivesatasit. Bhayam ditiya vinivesatasit. Isha da pitasya vipar jaya smiti. Tanmayaya. Tanmayaya to budho avajetam bhakti. Ekam, Esam, Guru, Devatatma. So, Srila Prabhupada translates this. When the living entity is attracted by the material energy that is separate from Krishna, he is overpowered by fear. See, again, this fear is coming, this idea. When the living entity, so... What is the birthplace of the living entity in the translation Prabhupada says? When the moment we misuse our free will, we saw separate interest from Krishna. That time the second world or material nature arise. That was the root cause of fear. Then Prabhupada writes, he is overpowered by fear because he is separated from the Supreme Person of Godhead by the material energy. His conception of life is reversed. In other words, instead of being the eternal servant of Krishna, he becomes Krishna's competitor. Huh. Now, <laughs> if 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 if, if you uh, okay, well, I'm going to finish the translation and then come back to this. This is called Viparjaya Asmriti. To nullify this mistake, one who is actually learned, one who is actually learned and advanced Worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead as his spiritual master. Worship deity, wa, sorry, worshipful deity and source of life. He does worship the Lord by the process of unalloyed devotional service. And this is the quotation. It's from Bhagavatam, Srila Prabhupada, 11.37. So here, let's see practically how it applies to us, or we are above or under. Here it says that uh, because he is separated from the Supreme Personality of Godhead by the material energy, his conception of life is reversed. In other words, Instead of being the eternal servant of Krishna, he, he becomes Krishna's competitor. This is called Viparjaya Asmiti, the problem of material existence or from the misconception of being product of material energy born from that point. Born from that point. So, Let's discuss a few minutes for this because this is so important. We may say that God is most lovable. Why he is like made us feel unlovable. That we are striving so hard to live in a peaceful, eternal life, but the material nature does not allow. And our karma gives us a new life. We don't know where we are heading. It's always like unexpected, always fear, worry. 
Now you can think of a example. Small children feel unloved when their parents are too busy to spend time with them. I hope not, but sometimes it happens. Worse still, if this happens repeatedly, they feel unlovable. They feel sometime, something wrong with them because of which their parents don't love them. And I saw one uh, Kormi family in this town that a uh, friend of a friend who told me this, the children suffer so much. Feeling unloved is distressing. It's a fact. But feeling unlovable is devastating. We should always remember as a devotee that we may feel unloved, but we are not unlovable. There's a big difference. Here this, this sloko actually give a very hint. <clears throat> In our life, we may find ourselves neglected by even friend, devoted friend, or, or even rejected by others. We too may feel unloved. If we face coldness, <laughs> harshness from people repeatedly, we may feel unlovable. We may think that something is wrong with me, with us, make us unworthy of anyone's love. But Bhagavad Gita Krishna explains this very nicely. Suridam. Many sloko has this word. Suridam sarvabhutanam. Bhuktaram jagatapasam sarvaloko maheshwaram. Again, suridam sarvabhutanam. Same word mentioned. What is literally if we break down that word and hold it in our heart? then we can see that Krishna assures us, Bhagavad Gita assures us, that Krishna always loves us. His love for us is based not on who we are, but on who He is. This is important. He is all loving, Lord of all loving beings. Krishna says, that Suridam means his ever well-wisher, benefactor of all loving, living beings. All living beings means that there is no exception he loves everyone. No matter how sinful or offensive or fallen I may be or we may be. No matter how many people abandon us. Say whole America abandon me. But still, Krishna will never abandon me. That idea has to be hold tightly in the heart. Krishna is always there in our heart. Nothing can make him leave his intimate position in our heart or to give up his affectionate disposition towards me. Devotional service, when Srila Prabhupada directing us, he's directing our consciousness towards him. Thereby enabling us to feel inner peace, joy in his remembrance. And when we remember Krishna, it enriching our feelings coupled with the profound philosophical wisdom of this Chaitanya Charitamrita. It will give us an affirmation, a conviction to know that we are still valued, we are loved, treasured by the person who matters the most is Krishna. Then you will see fear will slowly, slowly disappear forever. With the emotional security coming from our spiritual connection with Krishna, we can face reversal in our worldly relationship. Doesn't matter how rich you are, how beautiful, how comfortable house, how good car you have, there's always danger. 
but in connection to Krishna with all the material asset that connecting our family, everybody is for Krishna's pleasure, is Krishna's house, Krishna's children. This positively towards restoring trade relationship or forging new ones based on what is the best of our goal and service. That's why in, in Bhagavatam every day, we, when we decide that we do sadhana bhakti, we learn the best way to control our thoughts is to direct them towards the one who is always in control. So we need to control our thought that it is connecting towards Krishna who is actually always in control. And if we say... <laughs> Say for an example, we, say if we are say attacked by thieves, we may try to fight of them ourselves. But if we can quickly call the police and police rush to the place, then we will be protected. We will be saved. Because it is their force. That will fight against the lawbreaker's force. Similarly, in our day-to-day -day consciousness, every moment. Sometimes immoral, anti-devotional desires start arising. They start making our thought go wild. When our thought tries to go out of control, as fantasize about one term of indulgences, if we try to fight off those thoughts ourselves, we may or may not succeed. Ajamil tried. He failed. But what he did not do, that we can do by the mercy of Prabhupada. And Prabhupada said about it very interestingly. That Vishwamitra failed, but Haridas Thakur succeeded. Instead, we need to focus on calling the Supreme in charge, Krishna. He is the Supreme Controller. He is our well wisher so he is always in control. And besides, Krishna is the enjoyer of everything. So this is called not seeing separate world, separate existence. And so long anybody maintain that consciousness, I mean deep down, I am asking the audience, deep down in your heart you can feel as a conditioned soul, we could claim, yeah, I can live without God. How is possible? We are servant of God. How can that thought come? How it seems like natural, normal? Because of this misuse of free will and contamination with this false ego, this secondary world is visible. That causes the fear. And this fear, you know, moves everybody in their family life event. I need to go to job. Why you need to make money? Otherwise, you'll have no money. You'll be <laughs> on the street. I don't like to be in the street. I want to have a good name, fame, house, everything. People move by things in this world out of duty, out of responsibility, out of fear. Fear moves. 9-11. Uh, I remember. I was in San Diego. Oh, my God. The whole country, America, was moved. More people going to temple. So fear definitely has a biggest effect in the Kormi world. But what Krishna wants, that in this connection with Krishna, he wants us to get out of, not only out of fear, he wants us to get in with him, which is forever fearless. And there we can live happily forever with Him. So that is needed. That is required. Suppose someone has a condition with no easy cure, such as blindness. Now, because it, it, uh, you know, somebody told me that they may keep trying to cure that condition, 
they will also work to create a good life without that condition. Uh, sorry, within that condition. What applies to condition also applies to conditioning, such as lust, anger, and greed. When we strive to grow spiritually, our conditioning drag us towards self-destructive indulgence. That's why we need to work on our conditioning. We need to strive to purify ourselves of those conditioning by discipline and diligence. Each devotee has a, some spiritual insight and each of us has a devotional uh, book that guide us what are the rules, regulation, how to discipline our life uh, so that we can remain spiritually intact in a good shape and progressive mood and mode and stay away from the unnecessary uh, entanglement. So you have to customize, you have to systemize each individual. Like I have my lifestyle, you have your lifestyle. It may not be the same because everybody has a different condition. So the point is that each individual soul, I mean each individual devotee, sadhaka, should customize and systemize how to deal with the standard challenge by the application of devotional principle and spiritual insight. We need to strive to purify ourselves of those conditioning by, as I mentioned, discipline and diligence. Why? Because for such purification, the process of devotional service is remarkably important. You may say, oh, how? Because it connects us easily and efficaciously with all pure, all attractive, supreme Sri Krishna. Yet, different conditioning may infect us to different degrees. If a particular infection is deep-rooted, overcoming it may take a long, long time. Just like one devotee, four times married, this is not a common thing, but uh, once in a way, uh, an elderly devotee is 62 years old. So we had uh, some talk. I said, what is there that you are thriving anymore? Shoot an arrow towards spiritual life, one arrow, called banaprastha. Ban means like arrow, that it doesn't come back. Arrow doesn't come back. It goes one angle. That is required. Some inspirations, devotee, encouragement is required. Sometimes we get disheartened discouragement. So to prevent discouragement, we need also work with our conditioning. We need to keep practicing bhakti within the constraint imposed by our conditioning. Srila Prabhupada says, we should continue serving the Lord despite our conditioning. Even we have, say, grievance, wrongdoing sometimes. Bhagavad Gita, there is a famous verse you all know. Apicheta Shudra Achara Bhajade Mamananda. The sloka declares that Krishna is well-wisher of everyone, not just for the pure or only moral person. It's for anybody. Any condition. In devotional service, our conditioning are limitation. Not disqualification. That is the point. Our conditioning are limitation, but not disqualification. Within those limitations, we can still practice bhakti and connect with Krishna. 
through that connection, we will get inner satisfaction. That is needed. That will empower us to persevere spiritually and to simultaneously work on our condition, even if with limited success. Recently, we were just reading, Prabhupada prayed, not for success. His success and failure is up to Krishna. Very sweetly, Prabhupada wrote that song in the Jaladuta. He just praying to the Lord that to engage him, whether success or failure, he is not looking for. He just wants engagement. The Lord can use him for the purpose that he brought him here. So similarly, by re-conceptualizing spiritual life as not just working on our condition, but also working with our condition, we can get a taste of transcendence, bhakti, even while we are conditioned. And then being thus encouraged, we can move forward. Krishna steadily and eventually successful. That is required. What is the time now? Um, the next sloka is the famous sloka. This should take itself one class. Maybe yes, I don't know. Uh, we can, uh, or, let's see how much time. No, 12 minutes. Um, I would like to have, if anybody has a comment or question or correction or any other related subject to discuss, I would be glad to serve. Hare Krishna, um, Prabhu. <clears throat> Hare Krishna, Mother. Yes, as usual, so engaging class you gave. Um, just now, I, you know, I, I missed so many points actually, but just now you um, were making distinction between our condition and our conditioning. Can you repeat that distinction, please? In devotional service or in this bhakti path, our conditionings are limit has a limitation. But not disqualification. You understand that part? Yeah. Okay. Within those limitations, we can still practice bhakti and connect with Krishna. So, so through that connection we will get inner satisfaction. But then what is the condition then? Like, <laughs> for an example, somebody will say, well, I am crippled. I cannot uh, dance because my leg... I mean, this is a fact of a one day body. He had some accident. Uh, so then uh, the facility was given, the wheelchair, that he can come to temple. But then he says, no, it's too much. I say, so the mentally he's conditioned, but the circumstances that the incident happened, that uh, does not prevent him not to take advantage of Krishna consciousness. So his condition, the mental condition, that he is not attracted to Krishna consciousness every day to practice, even though such accident happened, he should be more serious. So sometimes we see that, oh, because he cannot advance because he had this accident or this. No, this does not really stop. Uh, there is nothing uh, in this material, uh, miserable world that can stop us not to love Krishna or serve Krishna. 
So condition does not necessarily. Uh, also, for an example, I give you very practical. One Mataji said, "The president does not smile. I did so much service, doesn't smi- didn't smile at me, so I don't feel like, I don't feel encouraged. I'm not going." Is this conditioning or condition? That's condition. Ah. So, what should be the proper uh, attitude? That you are not going there to get a smile from the leader Mm -hmm. or president. You are going there to please Krishna, Prabhupada. In that case, uh, you may say, well, some encouragement is required. Okay, but that doesn't mean, you know, the president is also another person, another Mataji. She may, may she may have a, some issues uh, that she is dealing. Doesn't have to have smile, and smile does not assure that you are a lovable person. And if no smile, you are not a lovable person. So if we have uh, some expectation in our service, then uh, beside pleasing Guru Krishna, then it can put us in a bad condition. But it is created by me, though by individual. Uh-huh. But circumstances, like that person cannot dance because he's, he broke his leg. Okay. But he can, mentally he can dance. And uh, uh-huh. he can feel that encouragement of dancing in spiritual world, in spiritual body. He can appreciate those who have the ability to dance. He can glorify them. Nothing stops. And the nourishment will come. Even though he may not move his leg, but nourishment can come. There should not be limitation. If yeah. that helps you. Yeah, no, it's clear. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I I also wanted to get I think some clarification about when you were talking about the fact that you know we may feel um, unloved, unloved, but but we're mm. not unlovable. And then you Correct. gave um, I think to help us with that you were trying to or I don't example know you, of a it, child. Well, you, you, you. I think I'm talking about where you brought Krishna in there, you know, to to so that we we shouldn't feel unlovable because Krishna's love is there. Is, is, very good. That? Yes, that and, is very true. And were, did you give? You, I might have missed, but did you give like supporting evidence of of the fact that Krishna loves us like this. Or you want an example of that? Yeah, I, I don't know if you if you had said something look like at, that look at or I missed it. Or any any anybody you can say, even Kubja, a great personality. Do you know Kubja was was such a uh, um, form that she was born as a child. I was researching one time about her previous life. She was a Surponaka, Rabun's brother, sister. And Kubja was Suparnaka? Yes, yeah, Surponaka. That uh, when when Lakshman Balaram Guru, she, he cut her nose and ear. Now. I'm not uh, going to talk too much about it, but the point was when you see a, a, on a on a flesh body attraction, if you see a person has no nose, like a little two holes only, no nose, and no ear, the beauty of the attraction for uh, flesh body it disappears. It's a, I was talking to even one psychologist professor, and he said, oh, that's a horrible condition. 
But why God would do that? He asked Miriam. I said, because of his extensive love for that soul. What do you mean? <laughs> he said, because none, nobody can satisfy the real need of inner fulfillment, the happiness which has no restriction, no bounds. The Prabhupada says it in a definition of love. Like, for example, the patient, the doctor can tell the patient, look, you have a sickness, you're not going to eat for one month, this, 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 this item. Now, he will follow, but not necessarily he likes it. So that's a one problem. Another problem is, his taste for those food is not gone. It's still there. Yeah, that's why he doesn't, so he doesn't like it. restriction. He doesn't like restriction, but he has to obey, otherwise he, it will be worse. And his taste, he cannot re replace or get it. So if you go many angles to look at it, the soul will never be happy without Krishna. Because Krishna is unlimited, infinite, in every angle, it's fulfilling the each soul's ever need is never even occurred. Like for an example given, like why Brajabhashi is moved, they say, okay, if, say, you are invited for, by your uh, friends every day for breakfast, uh, 10 houses, and you're choosing, gosh, how much can I eat? But they make delicious prasadam, every house. And say 50 houses inviting you lunch every day. And dinner, another 30 houses inviting you. Now, how often you'll go for shopping? Or will you go for shopping for grocery, cooking? No, you'll never go. Ah, that's the point. Because the happiness is so much abandoned, so much uh, flooding, uh, that uh, none of the Brajabhasi ever knows that there is something they need to do for themselves. As a result, they never do anything for themselves. Always they are thinking and doing for Krishna. This is, that's why it's a pinnacle, it's the best place that ever known before Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, nobody understood what Vrindavan is, Vrindavan conception, a state of consciousness where the soul can live and drown. And Prabhupada says either they can float or swim or drown, free existence in the Vrindavan. They never ever heard that kind of happiness. That's why Mahaprabhu put that line, Anandam Ambudi Bhardhanam. And that happiness has every moment new attraction, new feature, new experience, and it's increasing million times more every moment. For a materialistic, it's impossible to think. This is lie. How can it be possible? Because it is material. We cannot, with our puny or tiny brain, we cannot assimilate this, calculate this. So when Kupja was born next life, she was born in a form that no man would look at her. But the moment she met Krishna, her attraction towards Ram is revealed again. She expressed, then of course Krishna asked, oh, old, uh, she was not an old lady, she was just a hunch hunchback lady, ugly hunchback lady, nobody would look at her. Krishna says, can we have some sandalwood paste from your palm that you are every day decorate to Kongsa? And she took some. She gave some to Krishna and Balaram. Krishna uh, pressed her left toe and hold with two fingers her chin and made her straight. She became the most beautiful girl in entire Mathura. Even herself was like an ecstasy feeling. So, wow, this exists. From that moment on, she was forever eternally happy. No restriction ever. 
Even if she was in a demon family, now if you go research back, how much can she enjoy? Body is limited. Everything is limited. Not possible. So connection with Krishna actually gives us ultimate. Now, Kubja was not a lovable person. Nobody would look at her. She was depressed. She was sad. She even came to conclusion that I'm so ugly, nobody will ever marry, nobody will ever look. I know that, I see that. I'm not a lovable probably, that's why. But did Krishna see it? No. To Krishna, none of the soul is ever unlovable. To prove that Krishna did this to Kubja, she became the most beautiful. So it's for our own interest, we should run towards Krishna. And it gives him happy also. It's not only for our happiness. It gives him happy. Why? Because as a mother, I'm sure, I mean, I don't know if you're a mother, but as a mother, uh, any Mataji can say that, when the mother sees the children are happy in the family, they are playing, doing school nicely, honoring prasadam, they are very disciplined, they are so gentle, it gives them joy. So loving Father Krishna feels happy when the soul comes back home in a proper way, devotional way. So it gives him joy and it gives us eternal happiness. So Krishna never sees us unlovable, but we may feel sometimes we are unlovable or unloved. Okay, Prabhu, you know, with this Kupja story, as you said... He did not, her her looks did not make her unlovable to Krishna because he sees the Hare. soul. He doesn't see the body. Yes. So um, I, I, I lost you how you, how, when, when you said that he straightened her up and made her beautiful. You know, um, you know, a chiropractor? Yeah. Okay. They, uh, twist your body or muscle or bones, whatever they yeah. do. I don't know. One time only I had. So Krishna is the origin chiropractor because everything has an origin to Krishna. Krishna did his chiropractor practice with <laughs> Kubja there. He literally pressed her toes on the feet, uh, yeah. uh, left side, mm -hmm. or with his feet, and he, he, two fingers, he lift up her chin, and she, she was a hunchback. She never actually could, uh, she was born hunchback, mm -hmm. like a uh, crooked, you know, hunchback. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so he lift her, and all of a sudden, the bones and muscle, everything adjusted to a point, and the, all the beauty, everything like glamoured. Everybody was like, Wow. There is no girl in entire Motura city is as beautiful as her. Because she did little service. She wanted to connect with Krishna. Krishna had a feeling to give her that opportunity to establish that, Oh soul, come back. Come to me. You will be forever happy. So she did service. She did do service. She gave uh, the sandalwood face and she painted Krishna's face with it. Hare Krishna? Yeah, I don't know what's going on with the line. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, so, you see, my, my problem is that, you know, Krishna does not need to change her body for her to be lovable to him. So why did he even bother to make her beautiful physically? You know, how does that prove the lovability when, you know, he loves, our lovability is because Krishna loves our soul. Yes. So the fact that he made her physically attractive is like confusing me a little bit because it's it's like it's making the lovability dependent on the physical body, it mm. seems. You can look at 
you can look at it in two ways. One is, as a soul, you ever heard a uh, morning star? Uh, there was a um, kind of a club, the men's club in San Francisco when Prabhupada went there. Um, there is a many great personality came from there. Kamal Krishna Maharaj, Vishnu John Swami, they all joined from there. That morning star, it's like a man's group uh, place. They live there and everybody lives naked. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard it, but it is, no, I no. don't know if it is there still now, but it was there. So Prabhupada went there. Mm. And Prabhupada saw that. They invited him and he went there. And Gorahari Prabhu, he lives here in Alachua. And he told me the story. He was also naked and he was cutting vegetables. Uh, they grow potato. They do everything like self-sustain, all the men. So Prabhupada asked him, what is the purpose of life? He says, digging. <laughs> Prabhupada said, what is digging? So they explained him, oh, that's all he does. He digs uh, ground to get the potato. And, he, you know, something. He said, that's purpose of life? Just <laughs> digging only? So uh, Prabhupada uh, uh, was very merciful. He gave a class there. And all the young men, like a joint, and Prabhupada says, um, I understand why you feel attracted to be naked, to take off clothes. Because there is a, actually a beauty of taking off clothes. And I have come here to teach you how to actually take off your all clothes and see yourself as a soul. You have a covering of mental, you have a covering of physical body, you have a covering of karma, gain, so many layers. If you can take off all those, you will be in love seeing yourself the most beautiful, each of you. Nothing in this world is as beautiful as this. And then you will see the Supreme Lord is the object of your attraction, most. So the point is, here, to look at that, the Krishna was demonstrating that Kubja's eternal form, this is not a physical body like a woman of a mundane world, like Gopi's body. They're not mundane body. That was her form, spiritual form, so beautiful, uh, that Krishna wanted to prove it. Look, internally, as a soul, you have the most attractive features, but your conditioning making you unlovable. But your constitutional position, you are lovable. To demonstrate that point, to exhibit this, Krishna's manifesting her beautiful form was perfectly appropriate. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I didn't realize it was her spiritual form. Yeah. That, yeah, and she lived forever. He's, she's still there. When you go to spiritual world, you can meet her and ask her more questions. <laughs> <laughs> and and when you were explaining, you know, that you know you you it, Krishna's love is so overwhelming. Is that why you use that analogy of, oh, if so many people are inviting you to eat, then you won't have any need for grocery shopping? Was that the point? Correct, correct, correct. Mm. Correct. Because in this world, generally, our love constantly longs to rush forth beyond all limitations. Say again? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Our love constantly longs you know, to rush forth beyond all limitation. But as long as we love any material object or person, the flow of our love remains constrained by too often subconscious fear. It's a practical reality. See, loving Krishna has to be not this way. We limit the love that we offer to others. Why? Due to the fear that 
it may be at worst rejected insensitively or at best reciprocated inadequately it's a fact right like if you if you say you want to you love somebody you don't know the position of that person and what if he doesn't love me so there is a fear but when we talk about krishna is different he is eternally in a um, you can use the computer language default position that he is eternally a person that waiting to love you, to reciprocate with you love you never have to worry like the mind creates in this world we we do fee have a fear that focusing our love on one person may limit our capacity to love others now as a married lady in this world that uh when you love somebody you cannot love the same way to another person but in spiritually when you love krishna actually you love everybody this is very difficult we don't have experience of like that so we cannot grasp it until we have that manifestation just like proba expressed that proba said yes because i love krishna i love everyone they because, feel it that's why they reciprocate that way yeah, because he, he when you love krishna you you realize that everyone is part of that same person right very good yes some idea is there but the fear of this world is like you cannot love one person and think like everybody you can love the same way not possible but now to to apply when we con- consciously when we are consciously and consistently offer our love to krishna we gradually discover that it breaks free from those limitations this is from the experience amongst us many iskon devotees are progressing in spiritual path very substantially you can say okay and just to apply um the kubja story to our own case you know as you said kubja offered krishna some service and in reciprocation he he allowed her to see the beauty of her true self and so to apply that to our own case we should understand that we can feel lovable because when we perform devotional service krishna will gradually reveal more of our true self to us to ourselves so that we can see the lovability of our true nature is that the proper application of that story mhm mhm okay well i also it. that uh, kubja when what kubja did if you uh, just uh, reflect what i was saying that krishna actually approached her to take the if she could offer him and balaram some sandalwood paste like a, for an example say you want to please someone and you doing something to please that person like bharat lord ram's brother you are familiar with that story mm. bharat told lord ram i mean in a tattvagata vichar consideration of tattva both are god but in rasagata and lilagata vichar they are brothers and they have a love tremendous flowing between them so bharat says i cannot live without him i'm going to show him my ultimate love this is a very crucial point that king janaka who is the father in law of lord ram was there who came with bharat in that forest so in the discussion of assembly king janako was the judge and king janako asked bharat express your love he said i am going to show my brother that i cannot i don't want to live without him and if he does not come back i will throw myself in the fire right now in front of everyone so he told satrugna to build a fire a fire 
and Satrugna did, and the fire started. So he, Bharat said, "Okay, if Ram said he's not coming back, just to show him that how much I love, I'm going to throw myself in the fire to express my love for him. How much? How deep?" So <laughs> King Janaka says, very nice, uh, analytical. He says. The mountain, your love is like a mountain, a giant, big, so much love. But sometimes mountain, when it goes to the ocean, or if you take the mountain, it can go under the ocean. Nobody can see it. Uh, what it meant is, is, does it ever occur that love is not what you want to offer, Love is what will please the beloved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he gave a definition. He says, a true lover is always... Hmm. What's going on with the... I, I don't know. Am I there? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. He so says I... that uh, um, my phone a is... true lover is always attentive and careful about the desire of the beloved never mixes his own desire wow Bharat started opening his eye his tears started drying up because he was shocked he thought he has genuine love for ram now he found that his love is like tormented it was a self sense gratification was not a love for ram because king janaka asked Ask Ram if he's happy by throwing yourself in the fire. Mm -hmm. You want to show him that you love him so much. So he asked Ram. Ram says, of course not. Oh, so what is all this about? All this commotion was not aligned with the devotional principle. That's why, so our pleasing Krishna has to be like that. We have to pay attention. Then we will see the reciprocation. I mean, genuinely, I don't want to brag about it. I do see the reciprocation in my own life. I went through tremendous pain experience in this world. But I see that the reciprocation is so fulfilling, so nourishing. You don't want to live without Krishna. But it has to come in the genuine, pure love. Pure bhakti. Okay, I'm sorry. I went off with the example. Oh no, it's always welcome, Prabhu. I, I know I should let other people get chance, but I do have a couple other questions. If you know, if you will have time after. Yeah. Okay. So, I guess if anybody else wants Hare to ask. Dana Pranam, Glory to Shri Dana Pranam, Very nice class and discussing also. Uh, I, I also have some uh, one question, Prabhu. Since uh, you were the fear, um, and then uh, and also we have so many kind of fears in our life. And especially when we are practicing in devotional service. We supposed to have a fear from Maya, or uh, we should be fearful with Maya Devi or Maya. But uh, we can see outwardly. I can see myself. I like to practice devotional service, but the fear is in in our in my in subconsciousness. To you were also talking about surrender. Maybe when we surrender, the definitely we when we try to surrender more, Krishna will purify more and more that is there and then same time that kind of fear is there to cannot face the situation you know I mean uh, uh, this uh, practicing Krishna consciousness you want to go more advanced it will be more challenges is there Prabhu and then uh, that kind of challenges is very fearful for me Prabhu means how you can you can tackle these things There is a one verse in Bhagavatam 
11th canto, second chapter. When you have time, you can read also. Uh, it's very nice, sweet, uh, 48 text. That uh, how pure devotee or those who have love for Lord, how they see the material nature, Maya. And we can take our own pulse, means uh, our <laughs> belief and faith and practice, uh, and see how close we are aligned with their vision. When Prabhupada was here in this world, Maya is here, and Prabhupada saw Maya. Even in Vrindavan, on a morning walk, one Brajabhasi came and told Prabhupada, Please come, Maharaj, to see my deity. Prabhupada said, okay, I'll come later. The next day, again, he ran to Prabhupada. He saw Prabhupada walking by. So, Maharaj, you are not coming. When are you coming? He said, I'll come tomorrow. So, on third day, he went. And Prabhupada knew. <laughs> so, <clears throat> he went inside, and it's a big Durga baby. Now in Vrindavan, he don't think like that, but <laughs> there. So Durga Devi, he is a worshiper of Durga. So Prabhupada paid obeisances. But he paid obeisances not in a regular way. This is a nice thing to learn that uh, how we respect the daily God and how we respect the Vaishnava, how we pay obeisances. So Prabhupada put, uh, put heart on the right side. When we pay obeisances, we keep the deity on the left side. Because we belong to that family. And we don't want to be in that family from the right side. Anyway, that's not the point. point was that... Uh, so, Prabhupada uh, told the devotees, Nalini Kanta Prabhu from Alachwa, he was there in that walk. And he, was, uh, he remembers that uh, Prabhupada was explaining that how Mayadevi is so sincerely serving and later Prabhupada expressed that this verse, Grita, let's see if I can remember, Grita api indriye ba, yeah, Grita api indriye arthan, jo no desti no rishati. When you uh, are in this material world, while engaging your senses. How? In contact with their sense object. Eye to see, ear to hear. We are helpless. We are, we are doing this. Okay. <clears throat> One who sees this whole world, but how he thinks. He sees Maya as the energy of Krishna. Now, this should not be in the beginning. Beginning stage, we should always pray to Krishna for protection. As we advance, we also see Krishna has a purpose for this Maya to do her job. So, the pure devotee, they see it's Krishna's Maya. So, they neither repelled nor elate. The proportion to that, your experience, you know how much you are advancing, how much you are entangled, or how much you are not. It's an individual. There is no standard of measurement. But this is a standard of measurement, in a sense, that within you, when you see the sense object, how you feel. Do you, oh, that person, I hate him, or that lady, I hate her. Oh, that place, I hate this. This is not good. Means we have a negative investment. When we harshly say some mark on anything or any person or any object, means we have an investment there. We need to withdraw those investments. Positive investment means I like it. I love this place. Why? Oh, it's nice weather. I love this 
Allah uh, sunny sunny days is always good. People, you know, so much advertisement. Even you get a uh, actually a special. Anyway, I bought this. Uh, I forgot now what they call Sun Pass. Sun Pass. That's right. So you don't have to pay too so much. You just pay uh, advance. You buy for a whole year. Then you get some discounts because I drive here a lot to different temples. So, and they proud. They say so many things, brochure like how Florida is great, the, the sunny state, all this, and they show a place in misery. It's like it's, like it's not a misery in misery also <laughs> because it's snow, cold, ice. So the whole world is like either negatively invested or positively invested. Either they like it or they don't like it. Both, from both attachment, you have to withdraw. You have to see. But don't try to withdraw without connecting with Krishna. Because if you try to withdraw, you may for, suppress your uh, conditional attraction. But if you connect with Krishna, eventually you will feel like, what does it matter? It's all Krishna's. Krishna gave me here, he put me here. Then you will see everything will be purified. Your vision changes, your inner connection will give you very comfortable that you have no worry or fear of any attachment or anything. Even in your own house, you will feel like Golok Bindavan. Jedina Grihe Bhajana Dekhi Grihete Golok Bhaya Bhaktivin Thakur writes, When I see this devotional practice, it's performed. Jedina Grihe Bhajana Dekhi Grihete Golok Bhaya That I see the manifestation of Golok Bindavan in that house. You respect and love for your husband. His respect and love for you is no more bodily only. It is not only mental. It is a constitutional, pure. That's a genuine. You see your children as a loving children of Vaikuntha. Prabhupada said that. These are from Vaikuntha children. We should treat like this. Was it artificial? No, he said like this, to see them. But it requires some eye operation you know, like through Shastra, through association, to start seeing it, then we will be living in a very comfortable. Comfortable in a sense, not for, we are looking for comfort. Our whole existence changes. You feel like there's no difference that Golok Bindavan and here. At that time, if you genuinely feel that your Krishna consciousness is progressing because of this devo uh, devotee in your family helping, then you can take the whole family to Golok Bindavan. In 7th Kanto, Ideal Grihastha, after Prahlad Maharaj, 11 or 12 chapter, one Bharat's Parpur Prabhupada writes, when devotee feels like this, he can take the whole family to spiritual world. Is that answer you? Uh, yes, Prabhu. I really like the point. I mean, we are not supposed to surpass, but uh, means uh, not uh, like uh, try to connect with uh, everything with Krishna. And then, yeah. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Thank you. I think Gaurangi Mataji can ask the question. Brother devotee, is there any, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Well, the answer to that question, the way I understood the question, because it's my own question, you know, I, I, I'm not sure if it's the same question, but I, I, I couldn't actually understand the answer. Because what I thought she was asking, even if she's not, even if that wasn't what she was asking, my, my own question is, is how to um, get the get the courage to face the challenges that you know surrender might pose 
for us, you know. You know, Krishna's way of purifying us, you know, it might take us through some very stiff challenges and how to get the strength to want to face up to those challenges. Mm. Uh, was that the question that you were trying to answer? I mean, regardless, I think I need the answer to that. Similar, similar. Yes, almost same paraphrase. Uh, we all need some kind of empowerment from Krishna. And we should remember that verse in Chaitanya Chaitanya says, Kali Juga Dharma Nama Sankirtan Krishna Shakti Bina Naheta Without Krishna potency, we cannot actually do anything uh, in spiritual life. In order to really, uh, while happy in our practice and helping others to practice, we need some empowerment. But empowerment will never come unless we push ourselves to a, um, you know, there's a, a story, beautiful, that Prabhupada was taking Prashantara. Prabhupada was taking Prashantara with his godbrother in Kassar and that some visitor came. Uh, your voice is fading away, Prabhuji. Are you there? Yeah, uh, now it's better. Uh, oh, I, I think yeah. I, I, yeah, you disappeared. You were about to tell the story, and then you, your your voice disappeared. Oh, I think uh, my uh, earphone went off. Mm. It's like disappeared. Okay. So, Prabhupada was honoring Prashadam with the, with Shula Siddhar Maharaj and uh, some visitor came and had darshan of the deity and they are leaving. So Srila Prabhupada said to his god brother, he says, so this villager, they came and they saw two sadhu, two elderly sage or saintly person, devotee, they are honoring Prashadam. That's all they saw. But they did not see that one of us is holding the future mission of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And they were like, like, Prabhupada put a pause and then after a few minutes he said, in order to execute this, in order to serve Lord Chaitanya's mission, we have to be empowered. And empowering will not come unless we push our comfort zone, push out of it. Like for an example, like compassion, the word compassion, if you look at Prabhupada's uh, in Bhagavad Gita, one of the purport, when someone has no desire for material enjoyment, he can actually pay attention and see people others need. When I'm busy for my own idea, I see others, but I cannot feel and I cannot really see exactly what they need in reality. Neither I can pay a lot of attention because I'm full of my own world. I'm busy of my own sense enjoyment. So what Bhagavatam says is so clear. So then discussion went on, how the empowerment comes. Empowerment comes when we see that, okay, I'm fine. I do every day what I need to do and I chant. Okay, this Wednesday is Ekadashi. Okay, that's good. I'll do some Ekadashi. I'll chant. I'll live a comfortable life. Everything is good. But the next door... He's eating beef and horrible things and he's going to suffer after he leaves this world. And seeing this, I cannot uh, help because I don't feel, I cannot even see that he's going to hell. 
or he's going to suffer. That compassion doesn't even arise. But then if we pray to Krishna to accept my service, then Krishna will create an atmosphere where we need to push ourselves out of our comfort zone. Then we will actually give the neighbor some prasadam. Or maybe one book or something. Prabhupada said just to appreciate a book, Krishna consciousness book, he doesn't have to go to hell. Such a high prediction. This is uh, never heard. You don't see easily in Shastra like this. But because of his compassionate nature, he created those uh, piety that Krishna will respect that. So comfort zone, unless we go little out of comfort zone, we cannot be empowered. I'm chanting, okay, 16 nouns. In my own life, I can tell you, my uh, material on earth was not going away, going down easily. I was chanting, was not going down. I had to like push myself to increase my rounds. And then I hear Prabhupada say, if you could not control your senses, then in, chant more, increase your rounds. Then I, I did. Actually, I took challenge, I remember, um, in a sense, by his inspiration. I don't think I did it on my own. That I got inspiration from within, from the Lord, that I want to go further. So I went further. I doubled it, and, you know, more and more and more. And maintained for a while, you know, a few years. Everything like disappears, all this attraction. So the process works. How it works, discussion is required. How it works? Definitely works. this process works. How it works, need more dis uh, discussion. Mm. Mm, Prabhuji, uh, just, uh, I really wanted to get to know one thing so because uh, just like I can I have one in my situation I, I can share with you uh, here and we have, we moved in Labak uh, we just moved here because we were in different place and we moved here, here. the place is called Labak Lab yeah Labak and here is a university oh, yeah. really? <laughs> because we moved because here is a university we can do some service uh, the uh. reason we were in different place, so we moved here. But uh, you were telling we are uh, in my situation, I have to go out and then my strong desire to give the book and go to the out and give the book to the student. But I, I could not come the, from my comfort zone. I mean, at least uh, I could not start it. Uh, we just moved two, three months back. But always thinking in my mind, go and give book. And something, something comes with Saturday. Well, sometimes with kids, I am very busy. Saturday, Sunday, where to put kids. Uh, I don't want it to keep at home alone also like that. So many situations comes and, uh, and then I'm not going or... And different different things over oh, to park I don't know anybody uh, and a lot of things you know it's a little far I have to drive all these things means I don't know uh, I could not come out from my comfort zone I have so many books at home I kept in in my uh, cupboard and then to distribute the book but I could not go from my comfort zone to G. means mm. oh, we can do you have some other Matajis also around? No problem. Hmm. Maybe you have to make some devotee. You know, uh, you can also meditate on this uh, Gop Kumars. That when Gop Kumar finally met Krishna, was a very... Uh, hmm, was the word not accidental uh, the word is uh, like a unbelievable experience Mahatsangam the words goes Mahatsangam Mahatamam it's from Bhirat Bhagavatam that uh, Gopkumar at one point he thought I hear hear about Krishna's experience I hear all this Why, when will I 
see and experience and when intense and he prayed to his guru then guru blessed him then he got up and he realized there is no guru there is no scenery nothing he all of a sudden looked at forward it's a beautiful river jamuna flowing and literally so krishna is playing with all the boys and krishna told all the boys that wait i have a friend coming from the material world and he crossed the jamuna and ran to krishna and for long time few days he was like crying to krishna and krishna says why are you crying you are with me he said i know it's so beautiful so perfect everything is so good i missed you so much i didn't have any facility to come back then krishna said okay sit down here did you take birth in one life he could show krishna showing him in this place say yes who arranged that it's you say yes did you meet this personality who came to bless you yes i remember that because we have a hazy conception of dream so when you enter in spiritual world the material experience is like a hazy not clear but krishna can if he, if it is necessary krishna can show you do you remember you went to a place where impersonalist exists everything disappears everybody is interested to merge and shiva and parvati came to help you told you to run run away from here yes who told them to do that he said you he said yes and he was showing him one by one by one by one by one and then gokumar started crying and crying oh my lord i'm so sorry it was not really you it was me who was holding everything i had uh, so many reason and i was trying to not to accuse but i was thinking like i why did i stay away from you why i ever even went somewhere why you didn't help but actually you were helping so many ways so many form and shape by never appreciated so whatever wherever we are if we can connect within in our heart with guru krishna and start appreciating be grateful because we cannot see it will appear like artificial do i have to artificially appreciate something i don't even know if it is really no krishna is the cause of all causes he is causing everything we experience even right now i'm talking to you it is him who permits who allows my mouth to vibrate who allows to re- remind me so many things it is he allows you to hear he allows this internet to work or telecommunication he allows your hearing perception to hear it's all him seven chapter bhagavad gita yo yo yam yam tanum bhakta saddaya mochitam ichchati it is me krishna says i am connecting both when you have interest for anything krishna is not a a person that you can ever find any fault is beyond imagination how much he is helping so any situation whether it's favorable or not favorable it is him and more we start appreciating we will see different angle actually yes we are contingent doer we cannot just say everything is done by krishna that's not my point because if we say krishna is the only doer even the one sanas you one time said i remember that's how i got stuck with it and then when i read 18 chapter very thoroughly you will see the 18 chapter text 14 it says adhisthana tatha karta karanam ch prithag vidam vividas ch prithag chesta daivam iti panchamam and krishna says if you don't see this five factor is the cause five together as the cause then 
you will not complain anymore. I will not complain anymore. Nobody will complain anymore. And Krishna says, if somebody don't see this five factor, then they are not using intelligence. So everything that happening in our life, we can discuss one day on the five factor. You can read actually also very nice explanation given that actually this five factor is the cause. What does that mean? Means I am a contingent doer. The word in America or in English, contingent doer. I'm a part. I desire facilities provided by material nature, like body. False ego is the doer, like this. Then you go on. Like for an example, say you want to shape a piece of wood into a form or a something, some doll or something. Now you using uh, your hand. Hand is holding a hammer. Hammer is holding a chisel. Chisel is hitting the wood. So now, if uh, the final product, the wood uh, statue is there, and say, who is the cause of this statue? And the chisel say it was me. I chipped away unnecessary things and make this beautiful feature. It was not. It was there in the wood log, hidden. Nobody saw it. It is me. And the hammer will say, "No, it was not you. I am the one who hit you to do this. I was hitting on your other end, and then it chipped off." Then the hand said, "Wait a minute, hammer. It was not you. It is." I, the hand, was holding you, and you hit that. Don't say just, don't take yourself the credit. So like this, many examples, you know, I think sometimes how to apply. But everybody forget, there is a person who desires to make it. If you don't have a desire to shape this, this would not even exist. So contingent doer means our desire alone is not enough. The material nature, time, you know, Krishna sanction, everything has to come together, five factor. So wherever you are, wherever I am, wherever who, she or he, whoever is, it's all due to five factor. But it's all started from the soul desire. So if you desire, if you change the desire, I want to serve Krishna. I want to dedicate, surrender him. Don't put a condition, because sometimes when you hear about surrender, it's like, ah, Dasarati surrender. Oh, my God, Dasarati, oh, no. He completed his education. He came, and he, the teacher said, the final experience of surrender learning, you have to go to your guru. And his guru was sitting there, Jamuna, Ramana Jacharya. And... Ramana Jacharya had a five guru. And one of the guru, oh, Kanchipurna is the first guru. His daughter had a, some problem. She was married to a village. I'm thinking, should I tell the whole story? Like how long it takes so much time. But anyway, I'll just try to brief it. That uh, her mother-in-law father in -law, um, and uh, daughter-in-law, they always say, why your parents didn't teach you how to bring water, how to do things quickly? You are like slow, slow. Now she didn't grow up with this synthetic culture. It's like once you are married to that family, you are married. You serve the whole family, like kind of like that. Not in an abuse way. That was not Vedic culture, but it adapted that abuse system. So anyway, so she comes and complains to her father, and her father said, "Look, I don't know what to help you. Go to Ramanuj." He's my disciple. He will help you. So she came. He said, your guru, who is, happened to be my father, sent me. You have to help me. So she complained. Everything finished. That time Dasaruti just came. Finished his school for so many, so many years. He paid obeisance. He says, Gurudev, I finished my school. Only last part was left. One experience, he says, that how the surrender actually takes place, that I have to learn from you. 
Gurudev says, very good. You see this lady, this Mataji? Go to her house and do everything they need. Okay. Dasarati, the big philosopher, scholar, so famous. But he's so obedient to Guru. He went there. And he's carrying water from the well one mile far. And people say, ah, come on, fast. Go fast. We need to take bath. There is no water here. You need to bring more water. He cleans the house. He brings water. He helps cooking. Everything. Did almost many months until one day, one great Mayavadi, I should not say great, well, one famous Mayavadi, uh, he came in that village, and village are gathered. It's a common thing in India, I so. saw. Then he's speaking about philosophy. We all are one. We are ultimately have no form. There's no such thing called eternal form of God. There's no such thing called eternal you. We are all Brahman, impersonal. There's no relationship. There's no spiritual abode. Like. And Dasurti was uh, getting water and he thought, let me hear what's going on. The villagers gathered to hear him. When he heard it, he could not take it. Oh my God, he's pouring the poison and feeding all these villagers with the poisonous philosophy. He could not take it. He put the uh, kalsi, the water pot down and he went nearby. And the lecture is finished and then he says, excuse me. What you are doing, you are pouring poison to the heart of all those innocent people. Of course, this scholar were when, who are you? They say, oh, he's a maid servant. They have no idea he's the biggest scholar of, maid servant of this Brahman of, maid servant. A, a sudra has no power to even challenge a scholar like me. I'm so big. How can you? We don't even have a etiquette to talk. You are so far lower species. Why are you even bringing this point? What do you know about philosophy? So, some of the old wise men, they said, well, you have spoken your thing. We are also Brahmano. But if this man has something to say, maybe you should allow him to, please allow him to express so then he started speaking a little bit by the grace of those elderly wise men. And this impersonalist could not take it. He said, where? What is, where is this? This time exists. Then he started quoting those verses. See, Kanta, Kanta, Parama, Purusha, Kalpatarabha, all this beautiful explanation of Golok Vrindavan, how they are beautified, everything, every walk is a dance, every word is a music song and beautifully explained and this impersonalist could not take it he said you are a lone insignificant servant how dare you just diminishing my understanding he said you are it's not you your shelter is creating this problem so therefore i suggest that you don't pollute these innocent people's eternal relationship with God. Anyhow, he literally smashed this guy. And then all the wise men was like dumbstruck. Wow, he's not a servant. Who is he? Where is he from? They trace record. Within a few days, they found out he's the biggest, uh, best student of this guru. And Ramana Jachari sent him. Why Ramana Jachari sent him? So the villagers went to the Ramana Jachari. I said, how can you send such a great scholar disciple to be a servant. It is shame on our village lifestyle. We should not happen this. He should be our guru, teacher. So any Ramana Jachari brought him back. He said, okay, now you understood what is the definition of surrender. Did I scare you? No problem. <laughs> no, no. Okay. <laughs> But that's not my intention. So my point is that sometimes surrender, how it appears, not necessarily uh, for a karmi attachment is attractive, but for a devotee is like, wow. Because from that moment, his dimension of experiencing spiritual happiness is different than ever before. 
So how the surrender will Krishna make for each of us? Try to surrender wherever you are. Prahlad Maharaj surrendered. <laughs> Just ask a question to your entire family member one day. Say, can you say in this moment that you don't have any, ever any need that you need to pray or you need to get? You are completely satisfied. You don't need anything. You never need to need, even for a moment. Can anybody say that, okay, from now on, I'll never ask, I never need. Is it possible? I don't know. You can try. I don't know. But I had a doubt. So mm -hmm. I did that in one house. So there's no. We need only many. Do I don't know. Now that was not Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj is a surrender soul. He never asked for anything. Even at the moment of death. So many deadly atmosphere created. And I'm sure you're not facing, I hope, in that kind of unfavorable atmosphere. But Prahlad Maharaj, why didn't he pray? Because he always saw Krishna is already done what I need. Everything he is behind. And I don't need to pray. I only want to memory, remember him. By his glorious activity, by his quality, that's all I need. I'm always happy. And he found himself always safe and peaceful atmosphere. So that is one angle of surrender too. Many angles to look at it. And there's nothing wrong of each other. It's not less or more. It's just each person. Wherever you are today, Krishna's arrangement, Krishna's sanction. 13th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Anumanta, Upadrasta. It is my sanction that you are where you are. If you can start appreciating that, you will see a different light and Krishna from within will guide you. I really strongly believe that. And you will see that you will have a different sheds of lights in your heart that you will see progressing. Actually, it is all favorable atmosphere. Have you ever been to Bavari in New York? No, no, probably. Okay, well, you don't need to go there. It's all the hippie and homeless. Still today is not a really a elegant place. I went once. Uh, it's <laughs> it's not a very uh, uh, you know upper affluent area. But those days was even terrible. A lot of bombs and drug addict and hippies. But guess what Prabhupada saw? It's very mysterious. Prabhupada said, Vaikuntha is here. All this soul belongs to him. The Lord. Lord is here. I was saying, wow. When I heard this, I'm thinking, Bhavari? Lord is there. It's true. With the philosophy, the Krishna is in the heart of everyone. He's in, but Prabhupada saw the Lord there. How? <laughs> so that's Prabhupada. And we follow Prabhupada. Why not? By his mercy, we can also start seeing. So you can pray. Prabhupada will show you. Beautiful, peaceful life you have in preaching. What, what did he mean that he saw... Krishna when you meet Prabhupada, you can ask him. But he was serious. He said, Krishna is here. And he was walking. I mean, you have an idea about Bhavari, right? Yeah, I go there every week. <laughs> for a oh, center. so you live there. Okay. No, I don't live there. Uh, I don't live there. I live in New Jersey, but I, I'm okay. there every week because I go to Bhakti Center. But you have an idea about in 60s, I mean 65, yeah, yeah. 66, how it was? Yeah. Was it more horrible than now? Yes, yeah, much more. Yeah, so, but Prabhupada saw Krishna's presence. That's why he said, I, I, I am ready to fight with Maya. So, wow. It's so important. He's ready to fight with Maya. He said, Krishna is here with us. So, Ready to fight with Maya. Krishna is present right here in Bavari. Wow. So we need that vision. And Prabhupada can give us that vision. You know, if we 
we are praying to him, he will give us the vision to see him, to see Krishna as we are. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Actually, that was my in the beginning question also. It's a more challenging way we want to be uh, progress or you want, we, if we want to really surrender, it's always more challenging and it's kind of here. I cannot face this challenge, but uh, you you gave it. Mm. That was a long, in kind of person, Prabhu. And also, I really like Oh, you gave the example of Lord uh, Bharat Maharaj, how his love was the mountain, but inside the uh, ocean it was not showing. Kind of uh, our uh, whole intention, uh, how we are practicing is service is the main. Uh, the main thing is to please Krishna, but uh, and then when we go in that way, it will be easy, I think, Prabhu, because if we want, I, I am a, I am doing service or I am a devotee, I am doing already this, 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 I mean, so and this, in that way we cannot move, Prabhu, but what mm. is Krishna, uh, and then it will be very easy, I think, Prabhu, when we do our, when we practice in that. That's true. That's true. You got it. Thank you. That was very nice. Thank you, sir. We end. Hare Krishna Prabhuji Koti Koti Danvat Panam. Thank you very much for all the questions and especially all the answers, Prabhuji. That is so many Mataji's questions. Hare Krishna Prabhuji Danvat Panam. Thank you very much for the question. Thank you very much for the question. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me to solve. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. I hope uh, I can in the call. If anybody have anything to say to Prabhuji? Yeah, yeah Pr- Prabhu, there was a, one thing I missed um, when you were discu- discussing the five levels of um, morality, I think, or something. There were immoral atheists, moral atheists, those No, who that's the uh, evolution of consciousness. Well, the, the gradation, gradation of living entity are graded by their consciousness. Oh, sorry, evolving, evolving of their consciousness. Evolution of consciousness are graded into five. Mm-hmm. One is covered, the lower, lowest, like a trees and rocks. Above is Sankuchita. First is Aborita, this is the Sanskrit word. Sankuchita, then Mukulita, Vikashita, Puno Vikashita. Sankuchita means contracting like animals. They have a, you can see they have a life, visible. They have a fear, they have a activities. If it's too cold, they also like to run in the house or something like that. They go, if it's heavy rain, I saw some animal try to go in the cave. Not a cave, like a, what do you call, uh, under some bushes or something. <laughs> uh, then above is the human, mukulito, budding. Budding in a sense, like a flower, budding stage. It's not blooming, it's budding. Budding in a sense, over there, Bhaktivinoda could divide into five, another three categories. He says, uh, immoral atheist. And there are a lot of human beings in America, all over the world. They are immoral and they are atheists too. They don't believe anything. They do They do whatever they want to do and they go on like this. They don't say I'm immoral atheist, but when you talk to them, you can see. And then above them, or better than them, you can say, immoral theist. They believe in God, but their activity is not a very good. <laughs> And above them is moral theist. Then Bhaktivinoda Thakur will give a little more description. The moral theist are two types. One is who join in God conscious, like a church or temple, some belief in God. And above them, who actually in the process of surrendering and surrendered. So they are. So this this is how it graded. Uh, oh. uh, is this same as Annamaya, Pranamaya? No. Ramaya? 
तस्य ब्रह्मपुच्छम दैट अन्नमय प्राणमय मनमय ज्ञानमय विज्ञानमय आनन्दमय दिस आर द एक्जिस्टेंस ऑफ द सोल आल्सो दिस इज अनदर ग्रेडेशन वेरी गुड दैट्स आल्सो अनदर ग्रेडेशन 13.5 आई थिंक प्रोपद मेंशन इन भगवत गीता आल्सो इन भगवतम इज देयर uh but this is a conscious evolution this philosophy you know what the sweetness and beauty of this philosophy is practically you can see it with spiritual faith and believe you can see when you relate with people you can see where they are it helps us to help them mm-hmm. but prabhu there is covered contact and the budding levels but beyond budding Right there is two more no yes After blooming that. and fully bloomed blooming. blooming is like blooming is like we all are blooming when it is fully bloomed the fragrance comes the highest means uh, pure devotee very advanced devotee blooming would be like aspiring devotees right yeah every temple has all over the world right now naam hatos japo what they call japo meditation sangha no japo would you make a distinction between the fully bloomed consciousness and you know that category under budding which is sur- surrendered you know no budding is means the conscious intelligence has developed just like the cows in the slaughter house their intelligence did not develop so they don't know how to escape from this they are getting tortured but their intelligence cannot allow them to get out of this uh, suffering condition so intelligence is a, a, a is fully bloomed uh, not fully bloomed is a fully m- manifested whether engaged uh, utilized or not that is different question uh, manifested in in a human body and krishna confirmed that nideham aitam sulabham sudurlabham plavam sukalpam guru karna dharam nidham aitam ni means human deham means body nidham aitam sulabham sudurlabham very rare extremely rare but it is very well built like a boat to cross this material ocean what do you mean means intelligence can guide you properly because mind is bewildering every animal everybody as a human being if they are also guided by the mind then it's really sad the intelligent can guide intelligent can guard us and guide us to focus in the path of bhakti intelligent proper said intelligent is that which kills the desire before it turns into action so if we have some desire we may not like it we take shelter of intelligence intelligence means the stay in bhakti chanting and sadhana then actually those desire will disappear we are not really should not be this is my opinion that we should not be so much focus on rejecting the desire what is coming in our mind mm. why because i even tried myself it doesn't really gives ultimately good but if we focus on selecting desire select desire is coming okay i like this this will help propad and krishna okay i'll do it this other desire is passing by we are not paying attention if we can become selective then we be, we are way ahead if we are just rejecting just like how much can we reject difficult okay so budding consciousness means the intelligence is fully developed uh no intelligence is 
available. May, uh, how do you say it's uh, visible? But if you take shelter, like people, it, it, it's your free will to take advantage of it. Like, you know, I have a one gentleman, Bob. I was talking to him yesterday. He's helping me with some house. I had some rental house. I'm trying to get out of it, sell it. And I was uh, talking to him about monism and monotheism and it was just a uh, while working. And he was very appreciative, such a nice appreciative. I said, why don't you take Krishna consciousness? You, are, you already grasp it. You are already getting old. So I am trying. I said, trying means you have to push yourself a little bit. So I gave him a little prasadam. I, I had some prasadam at home and came back. And then I'm going to meet him again today. And then I, I wanted to let him start chanting a little bit. Because he's, he's, he's intelligent in a sense that he is not judgmental. Because judgmental is what blocks us. Sentimental and judgment both are bad actually. Judgmental is like you talk to somebody, he already thinking, oh, I know about God, he doesn't have to tell me. He doesn't say it, but in his mind he's <laughs> like, like oppose, oppose. He don't see it, but with his features and he's not willing to take Krishna consciousness, you can see what, what he's doing. So, <clears throat> intelligent means liberal mind. First thing is liberal mind. Liberal mind means you are open to hear. When they open to hear, they can actually see that material, or, or you can say, perfection of intelligence means to see that how our mind is disturbing us all the time. Oh, so you can separate yourself from the mind. Yes, mm -hmm. through intelligence. And when you separate yourself from the mind, you are actually has a uh, ability to choose. Mm -hmm. I say, I know I'm thinking that I don't want to be part of it because this, I can see where it's heading. And then you can say, oh, this is a good idea. We, I should do this. This will boost my spiritual life. There's a big satsang. I'll go there. So like this, but we have to separate from the mind. Intelligent is the only one can help us. But in, when I say intelligent, it doesn't mean it's a separate entity. It's, it's, soul is the only entity. It's a different element. Like for example, you know, when I have a dark glasses, I see things are dark. When I have yellow glasses, I see things are yellow. So it is just a, like a put. Uh, how do you say, your thinking, willing, feeling is filtering through a, a, a media. They are not separate entity. Mind is not a separate guy within you. It's just a div different uh, vision. Like a computer. If computer gave a bad... Uh, say email or dirty illegal stuff in the news it's not the fault of the computer it, what is coming through is the fault uh, sorry what is coming is the false substance it is not the media so mind and intelligence they are kind of like a media you know that's a, another subject it's like so vast and you can talk like whole year won't finish because intelligence is such a big subject and we use this every moment when we must use Prabhupada give uh, this Jata Buddhi Asraya Etad Isheshya Ishanam Bhagavatam says Etad Isheshya Ishanam Prakritas Tavitad Gune you want to be above the Prakriti you want to be above the three modes then you will not be entangled. What should I do? Jata buddhi asraya. Take shelter of buddhi. Leave on the buddhi platform. Let's see everything through that. When you see through the glass of buddhi or intelligence, then you will stay above the three modes effect. It's there, but it's not affecting you. Like cold weather is there, but you are inside, warm atmosphere. Cold weather is still there, but you're not affected. There is some shield, 
some insulation wall or something that's called intelligence. It saves you. Temptation will be there. Everything is there as long as we are in the material body and material world. But we will not be affected. No jujjade, sada atmosthita, sada buddhi rasvaya. Very sweetly. Prabhupada quote that verse. That's how I learned that one. So intelligence has a many functions. The highest perfection of intelligence is that our, <laughs> it takes a great intelligence to know that our, uh, our intelligence is not great enough to know the greatest personal, uh, greatness of the greatest person. Mm -hmm. But you said that intelligence and mind, they're not separate, but, I mean, don't we hear that they are separate because soul is spiritual? They are all material product. They are not entity separately. Just like somebody oh, yeah. says, oh, yeah. my, my, my mind is bewildering. I said, but my, your mind is not a separate guy or person to stop you. Why don't you switch it? Take off the glasses, put on the proper clear glasses, you can see clear. What do you mean? I said, this is media. If you really analytically, analytically study about the mind, intelligence, and ego, you'll see that actually they, these are not uh, separate, uh, overpowering uh, Personality they're not or independent. Instrument. You, mean, you mean they're not correct. independent? Correct. Correct. It is up to us what we want to use, whether it's a physical level or subtle level or constitutional level. It's up to us. That free will is we have all the time. We can have an impression. We, yes, we do. We have. A, we are carrying sanskar. It's called prakton sanskar, adhanik sanskar. Adhanik sanskar means how you grow up. If I grow up, just like this neighborhood where I am in. Some people grow up, mother ate hot dog, children, it's like a normal, and then you tell him that uh, like uh, you give a, you saw a devotee hot dog, and they, their mouth and their inside feeling is like so terrible feeling. They don't want to be part of it. But this guy grew up, uh, that uh, you tell him a hot dog, it, it doesn't even bother him. He thinks he's irreligible. So, how is possible? Because he grew up. Those are called sanskar, imprint in the heart, impression. So, when he calculates something, you know, when we see the object, object does not dictate what the object is. It is the person who ascertain, uh, conclude what the object is, according to their impression, previous impression. So, it is necessary that hearing, chanting, those are the impressions. And the heart is getting so much imprinted. And one time the heart will have all the impressions filled. Then you can start drawing, painting of Krishna in your heart. You can literally see Krishna in your heart. Now we are, we are just putting all this. You know, artists, they do a little sketch with the pencil. And once they convince, wow, it's beautiful, then they take a paintbrush and start painting. So similarly, something like that. We are just getting all the information about mind. Mind has itself is so much. See, that's why in Bhagavad Gita it says, Uttharit Atma Atmana Yam Atma Vashadet Atma Iva Atmana Bandhu Ripur Atmana That uh, Prabhupada translates that you can deliver yourself with the help of mind. Now, if it is without the help of mind, it will be easy. But you don't have a choice because you're riding on that machine. Everybody is riding on the mental body. The soul is floating in a five air. And this five air, it, 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 they don't have a separate existence from the mind. They're one. And intelligence is also carrying. But the, but the mind is holding the senses. And it's all, everything is like a connected. They are, they are carrying the soul. Soul doesn't have a separate existence here. But soul has a free will within the carriage, within that carrier. So like that. There's so much explanation given. I know. The mind, the mind is not an independent entity, but it can be so forceful that it feels like it. Yes. 
when you turn the wheel right you, you on the steering the wheel goes right why you set it up that way so when when you are not feeling well mind immediately come up with be angry and yell to that person wait a minute why well it's not really fault of mind this is how i train the mind to act so who should i blame now you know i always uh, make a fun joke because i got hurt one time i put some cactus we had a nice house a uh, long time back another house and then uh, i put some cactus on the side of the drive so that the other other creature doesn't come we had a like forest house and one day i was rushing and i stepped on the cactus <laughs> it hurt so bad and i'm thinking who should i blame and i was laughing as i was, but at the same time my mind was thinking blame somebody <laughs> for you suffering but who should i blame i am the one who planted it <laughs> so our life is like this we have trained the mind to deceive us we have trained how can we blame anybody nobody it has to be correction has to be there but what we are doing now you can say then what we are doing what we are discussing discussing that we have to be acknowledging all this when we acknowledge then it gives it reflects when it reflects it reinforces our emotion what is that boils down to boils down to that will regret oh i should not have done i should not have trained my mind if this is the fact my mind is not disturbing i trained my mind to do like that mm. you know i had a one tenant i won't say the name and any anyway, she's nice okay okay <laughs> there's something funny about it so then i asked the tenant how this tile broke and she said oh we just stepped and broke after one year i said you stepped after one year it broke and you, you didn't step uh, for whole year only like last week or when did you step she said no it broke last month i just didn't tell you. i said but 11 months you didn't step on this tile so what are you why are you asking like this then her little daughter she came said no mom that drop that tv was so bad that it broke the whole tiles and i was thinking i will i never forget that i'm looking at her face and the child face now what happened so then the tenants she just yelled to the child and said shut up you know you know all kinds of things and i felt horrible this is how this child will ever get to learn what is proper what is not proper what is truth what is not truth and it's very it's 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 very um destructive this way because i'm sure she has a affection for the child but the child said the truth but she was trying to establish her lie as a truth but she didn't know how to adjust it and she didn't want to confront it and so it left like this and it reflected me i said wow it's just like a, your mind you know even though mind is a simple but you train to be deceiver and cheater and then if she keep on doing it this child will grow up as a, like a, you can lie it's nothing harm you know like uh, i i read a one psychology book one time um because when iskon was uh, kind of because i feel attack when iskon was uh, sued uh, by some children and i didn't know everything about it just little bit but i felt not good comfortable so i was reading and uh, and uh, there was many things and one thing was striking i still remember i said if child feels encouraged accepted and appreciated despite child may have a childish uh, mischievous and other that child will find love within the family 
And it struck me in a sense that if a child comes to temple and don't feel encouraged or appreciated and accepted, despite they are, you know, child does childish things, and some angle, the temple authority, the parents, the whole village uh, leaders, everybody, they should. Then the child will grow up and child will be a great devotee. Will realize, okay, I had a lot of fault, but they overlook my fault. They, they always encourage. And that is required. We all are child, even though we may be grown up, but in a sense we are child. So it, we have to help each other to at least have a proper respect and like at least mutual respect, then it will be easily to live in a community. Because we all love Prabhupada. Prabhupada's highest gift to me will be that if there is a community that display, exemplify his instruction, his, what he came to give, then it will really glorify Prabhupada by those followers, because they are applying his philosophy in their life, and they are showing their loving sentiment and embracing, attracting other people to come and join, because they are happy. They live harmoniously in a community. That's a big preaching, and it's required. Sometimes it's disrupt, because Maya likes to disrupt within the community. Sorry. When too long, it's already one thirty. Mm. Oh, always not long enough. For both. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you so much. We land. Is Mother uh, Anjana Gopika is still there, or maybe she's not there? Okay, I'll end with this. Banchakal patru vishya vipasin da payvacha patita nam pavane do vishnu vipo namo. Thank you, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Thank you so very much, Prabhu. Can't wait till you come on again. <laughs> Thank you so much, Prabhuji. It's a really, really, very, very eye opening class. Yes, Prabhuji is gone. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, you could not even. My phone was not working. Thank you so much, Kaurangi Mataji, for always asking so nice, deep question. Really, I'm, I'm sorry you. for making the class go so long. I just couldn't help getting the clarification. Completely fine, Mataji. It's just, it's a kind of, we need to understand deeply yeah, what is what it's a special subject matter. is like that, Mataji. Thank you so much for yes, asking. Please invite him again soon. <laughs> Thank you all the devotees for joining. Thank you, Ajna Gupika Mataji and Gaurangi Mataji. Very, very nice questions and answers. Very nice conversation. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Uh, we can now in the car. Once Kalpatara Vesha, Kalpa Sindhu Evacha, Tita Nama Pavane Bio, Vishna Vibhu. Thank you very much, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Best plan, Govinda Prabhuji ki jai. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Hare Krishna.